Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. It's time for another Master Duel video. Specifically, it is Monday once again, which means it's time for another one of our viewer specials. Yes, the viewer special. We all know it, we all love it. But in case you don't know it and don't love it yet, here is how this generally works. So, uh, once a week on Mondays, usually on Mondays, uh, I like to go ahead and show off some games, not from myself, but rather from you all, the viewers. And there are, of course, a few reasons that I like to do this. First and foremost, it's just a cool thing to do for the community. I don't know. Y'all are really good duelists. Y'all play some really cool decks. Why not show them off, right? Uh, it gives a nice opportunity for us to watch other people besides myself play, which I also think is important because I think one of the best ways to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh! is to watch not just one person, but multiple duelists play. You get to see multiple decks, multiple points of view, uh, various insights, so on and so forth. So um, I think it definitely behooves us to uh, not only like learn better by you know watching you all play as opposed to just me, um, but again, it's also just a nice kind of community-driven thing we get to do. Um, plus, I mean, again, you all play some really good games, and I just genuinely really enjoy watching them. So uh, that is one thing to know that. Even if your replay doesn't get featured, know that I very likely watch it, because I watch pretty much 90% of the ones that get submitted. So, uh, if you are wondering how to submit your replay to be featured here on the viewer special, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can do so in one of two places. I highly, highly advise going to the description below, clicking the Discord invite link, and going over to our Discord server, the Hexlexplex. Uh, we have a channel there that is dedicated to viewer special submissions, and not only can you get your viewer special uh, submission in there, but on top of that, it's just a cool place to hang out. Uh, we have a lot of really, really cool folks in the server. Hundreds of duelists are there. We're always talking about the game and just kind of hanging out in general. So, um, yeah, feel free to stop on by. We'd love to have you. And if you are... Uh, not inclined to do so, that is also 100% okay. You can also submit the relevant information to the comment section below here on YouTube, and I'll make sure to go ahead and keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, as far as what information I'll be needing, uh, the most important is going to, of course, be your nine-digit player ID. That way I can see your profile and see any publicly saved replays there. Do make sure that you are saving your replays as public. If they are not public, I'm not able to view them, and of course then can't feature them. So, um, yeah, it also helps too if you have multiple replays saved, uh, and you want me to see one specifically, definitely leave either your opponent's name and or uh, the date and time, so that way I know that this is the one specific game you want me to see. Uh, it's also very helpful if you want to throw in just a little bit of a blurb about the game. It could be as simple as, I played this deck versus this deck. Uh, but if you want to talk a little bit about how the game went and why you think it's a cool duel, uh, that also is very helpful. And if you don't get featured this week, uh, it is all good because, again, we do this every single week. So there will definitely be more videos to come uh, where you can get those games in. You can also submit more than one duel if you have more than one duel to show off. Uh, I just ask that you don't spam the same submission over and over again, but we've never ever had a problem with that. So I don't expect we will moving forward. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything, so let's go ahead and just start taking a look at some of y'all's replays. Okay, our first duel for this episode of the viewer special is going to come to us. Let me change my facial expression again. I always do that on the viewer specials because I have my, uh, various facial expressions binded to the number keys here. But anyway, uh, Adelon's gonna have our first game. Uh, I was eager to see a duel where somebody was playing Vanquished Soul. Uh, because I have not built the deck here myself, and uh, Adelon not only has a game where they are playing Vanquish Soul, but this is actually, I believe, a game from the last Decade Meta Weekly that they participated in, so that's cool. I've had people ask on the channel too, as of right now, I do not have any plans to build Vanquish Soul currently. Um, not because I, like, hate the deck or anything, I just, it's just so many URs. It's so many URs, and even though I don't hate the deck, I I'm not, like, eager to go out of my way to pull for it, if that makes sense. But uh, we'll definitely go ahead and take a look at Adelon Brock, this Vanquish Soul deck. So, what's the opponent on? Looks like they are on Endemian. Okay, cool, right on. We're going to be taking the first turn. Let's start by normal summoning the Raisin. Raisin's going to add Dr. Mad Love. Then we get to Stake Our Soul, revealing Jin Long for the... Oh, I assuredly butchered that name, I'm sorry. Uh, for the other Raisin here. 
going for the Rock of the Vanquisher. Especially in Dr. Madlove. Ooh, that'll add the Dust Devil. This card is especially nasty. Oh, we're going for Baguska too. <laughs> oh, speaking of being especially nasty, but no, the Vanquishful Dust Devil is an especially nasty card. It's it's pretty much an in archetype Book of Eclipse, so that's pretty good. <laughs> that's, well, it's not too shabby if I do say so myself, and I do in fact say so myself. But all right, let's see what Endymion's gonna get up to here. So. Looks like they're on the Spellbook engine specifically. But that's gonna get negated because of Baguska, yeah. So I don't really know why, I guess to get a spell counter, I was gonna say, I don't really know why they bothered to summon the... the blue... what is this card called? Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. But... Okay. And this adds cards that have spell counters? Oh, Pendulum Monsters! Any Pendulum Monster from deck to hand, wow. I thought it added monsters that use spell counters, but... Alright, we got the Endymion Master himself, as well as Reflection of Endymion, but thankfully, again, that Baguska putting in some work here. Ah, there's the Electromite, though. Alright, walk, walk, Rock, rather, of the Vanquisher. It's gonna allow us some of the Caesar Valius here. Hmm... I don't know how often this deck actually goes into Baguska, but it is actually very good, I think, that we did so here. Because I don't think our Vanquish Soul Disruption, even if we had had access to a lot of it, would have been enough. Although we do still have the Dust Devil. We don't need it here, but like we could have potentially used that here too. But no, this this Baguska is pretty... Okay, we are going to use the Dust Devil here. Oh, to stop him from going into like an Apo and like running over our... Or just any Link monster and then running over our Baguska. Now we get to book two of their things. They're going to Into the Void, Peeling Desires off the top. So you are going to fire off here. Opponent's actually getting kind of low on deck. 13 cards left. They draw two chicken game? That's pretty unlucky for them. Oh, they actually still had the card to send off Magician Souls, too. Nine cards left in deck. Wow. <laughs> Celine with a million counters. Spell counters are so annoying in Master Duel. You have to place them one at a time. It's 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 awful. It's one of the reasons that Demian decks take so long to combo. Well, aside from their combo also just being a longer combo, but honestly, one of the reasons is yeah because they uh, they have to individually place all of those counters. You have to click for every single counter that gets placed. Not for Celine, I think Celine just adds them automatically, but I don't remember actually. I know that like when you're spending them, you have to click each one individually. Like, there's not like a it doesn't offer you like a drop down, like, oh do you want to spend three from this one? It's like no, you have to spend one from this card and then one from this card and then one from this card. Even if like Celine is the only card in the field with spell counters, but anyway. I get to blow up our opponent's back row thanks to Pantera. Reason we'll add the Borger. I think it's so funny. And I, I, I know, I know it's actually Borger, not Borger, but I think it's so funny that the same pack that had the Hungry Burger support also has a card called Heavy Borger. <laughs> it's so good. Alright, doing our Zodiac line here. Ah, I should say we're doing our Zeus line here. Yeah, I'm starting to see how we were able to, uh, Pivot and come back in this duel, but like, God, Vanquish Soul is—it's such a good control deck. Between their own in archetypal disruption, the fact that we can just so easily go into Baguska, and uh, the deck is also very, very capable of playing Tickboo. There can be only one as well, because all of their monsters have different types. So, yeah, I don't imagine it, really any Pendulum deck in top deck mode is going to be able to do much, but especially our, our Endymion opponent who had, like, nine cards left in deck. Like, yeah. I, I I don't think there's anything they could have done there. So, that was great. That was excellent stuff. Like I said, I really wanted to see um, a good Vanquish Soul game here. So, thank you very much, Adelon, for supplying that. Let's go ahead and see our next duel here. 
Alrighty, so our next duel is going to come to us from Almec. Almec and Adelon both actually have submitted to the viewer special numerous times before, and I often enjoy chatting with them both here on the Discord. A couple of regulars we got here. Uh, and Almec has a game with Novelis for us. So we're going to get to see the new decks that I have not built in action here. We just saw Vanquish Souls, and now we get to see the alleged Hungry Burger deck. Although, if you watch my pack opening videos, slash follow me on Twitter or Discord at all, you'll have already seen me rant multiple times about what I think of the <clears throat> quote-unquote Hungry Burger deck. I don't dislike it as a deck, like, mechanically or anything. My gripe with it is just that it doesn't have anything to do with Hungry Burger. <laughs> like, it feels like they had a different food deck and they just tacked Hungry Burger on. But anyway... Let's start with my favorite Hungry Burger card, Cash Your Fender. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But uh, Pre Prep is going to add. Oh god, these cards like they have like the most French names in the world. I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try. I'm even like French. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> so I'm sure even Novelis. I'm already butchering that pronunciation, but. Also, I say I'm French. I mean, of course, I'm American. I'm just, like, very distantly French. But anyway. Yeah, I have no idea, mechanically, what this deck does. So, normally, I can, like, even if it's a deck I don't main, I can, like, at least kind of follow along. Because I've, I've at least played against the deck. Or I'm familiar with the effects. But I have neither played against this deck, nor have I really fully, thoroughly read all the cards. Of course, I've read all the cards. I just haven't committed them to memory, so... I know one thing that is kind of cool thematically about this deck is that I'm pretty sure the Ritual Monsters, which all represent, like, various meals, like, their Ritual level is, like, the Michelin star count of that meal. Which, that's, that's pretty cool thematically. But again, thematically, it doesn't make any sense why this is the Hungry Burger deck. Why is this fancy French restaurant making burgers? Here's, here, I guess, I don't necessarily even have a problem with that. I think my problem is that the Hungry Burger deck is not a ritual-based McDonald's deck. Listen, ever since I know, and I know, I know, this this one card actually does depict somebody making a burger, but it's literally the only one. But, um... I think my main gripe is that ever since I thought about the idea of a ritual spell that somebody's shouting into the drive through speaker box, like, I just want that. I want that so badly, so... Our opponent is going to be on Black Wings. I don't know if I actually mentioned that, but... Uh, yeah, Simoon is kind of an anti-combo against the Kashira Fenrir, because the Fenrir gets to immediately banish the Black Whirlwind that would then normally let you add something. Also, uh, looks like we get to Tribute. Wait, what does it say? You can target one attack position, monster your opponent controls, Tribute it. Special Summon... Oh, it's a quick effective with summon. I was trying to figure out how we activated this. I was like, wait, is this a quick? It's a quick effective. This was uh, summoned by a Novelis monster. So it is kind of cool that you get to tribute your opponent's monsters. Special summon to get the effects of all face of cards. Your opponent controls to the end of turn. Opponent controls as possible. Oh, okay. So interestingly enough, it seems like this might have. I mean, not that we. Oh my God, Jesus. Talk about a Blackwing hand here, just like kind of vomit out all our monsters onto the board, but... So that looked like... Something this looked like it didn't do a whole lot, but if you actually read this card's effect, it really only didn't do much because our opponent didn't have much on the field. Like, didn't have anything on the field. If our opponent had cards in play, uh, the Belgril de Noveles here uh, would have negated our opponent's entire board and then also tributed as many of their monsters as possible. That's like... That's like Dark Ruler No More and a Mega Kaiju in one effect there, which is kind of wild. Uh, of course, the main difference being this can be responded to, but... Alright, let's see what, uh, what our Blackwing opponent does here. Ooh, they're going for the Chaos Ruler, okay. But we have the Chef's Special Recipe. Which, okay... This is actually, again, another one of my main mechanical gripes of this deck. People call this the Hungry Burger deck. These are literally the only two cards that even mentioned Hungry Burger. This one is like... And they're also... They feel very tacked on, honestly, right? Like... 
Okay, yeah, being able to tribute your opponent's monster and special the Hungry Burger from deck is, like, a good effect, but again, it just doesn't feel like it has anything to do with the rest of the Novelis deck. And then Chef's Special Recipe is even more the case. Like, it reads like a regular archetypal counter trap card, and then at the end it's like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, sure, if you summon Hungry Burger, you can tribute your opponent's stuff, yeah. Even the art, I feel like, I already talked about all this, I've already mentioned all this, but... I will die on this hill! <laughs> Those who follow me a lot on social media know that if I if I find a hill, I'm 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 going to die on it. <laughs> and this is mine for for the flavor. It's also like, how is the food deck a flavor fail? That's such a disappointment. But yeah, this I think was a really cool showcasing of just uh just how nasty the Novelis deck can be on turn one. Because, again, we didn't even, because we actually opened so well and stopped our opponent so much, we weren't even able to see fully what the Bale Grill can do. Again, that could have completely negated our opponent's field and then tributed all their monsters. Our opponent just didn't have a board when we summoned it because we were already doing so well against them. But that's some great stuff. Thank you very much, Almic, for submitting that duel uh, with Novelius there. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right, we do have one more duel we're going to see. Let's go ahead and go straight into that here. Okay, and for our final game, we have one from Toadette. Toadette's been on like a Code Talker slash Cybers pile lately, which is definitely the type of deck that I'm also eyeing, that I've been interested in. And I want to see a U-Link with the new support. So let's watch Toadette do a U-Link with the new support. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I think it is this game? Hang on, let me take a look here. Yes, I believe it is this game. Toad, it's funny, Toad here says, The U-League takes so damn long, even if you know what you're doing, any interruption or misplay, or if you draw two out of 60 cards brick, you can change your plays madly. Also, people tell you, out of Nister takes forever to combo, this deck takes even longer. We are on a 60 card deck here. I want to see your extra deck, too. Ah, that's right, Toad's got the Royal Dark Fluid and the Royal Access Code. Oh, so good, so jelly. But... I think I actually, yeah, because I actually crafted the Firewall Dragon just last night, so... Yeah, I think I have everything for this deck now. Why, well, I haven't seen the main deck yet, but... Toad, if you're watching, you might have to... If you haven't already, post that, post that main deck there. I'm quite curious, so... Alright, we're normally defensor, especially in Sigma. I'm not going to try to commit to memorizing this combo line right this second, but... I do want to show off a U-Link here. So we went for Link Decoder, and now we're going for good old regular ass Code Talker. <laughs> not Decode Talker, not any other kind of Code Talker. Just good old quote unquote vanilla Code Talker, although of course it's not a vanilla monster, but. I got the transcode coming down here. Transcode F to bring back the Code Talker. Ooh, and we get to use Code Generator from our hand as well. That foolishes a Cybers monster, I think, with 1,200 less attack if you do that. Yes. And then Xcode Talker is a zone block, I think, actually. Yeah. When you think someone you can use unused main monster zones currently... Yeah, so you get the zone block for every extra monster zone you're in when this thing is summoned. Or is that once per turn? Yeah, when it's like summoned, okay. Okay, here's the Code Talker Inverted. I know a lot about, uh... Well, okay, I actually don't know a lot about U-Linking. What I was gonna say is, what I know about U-Linking is that a lot of it has to do with managing your Link arrows. Like, not even just having the right number of bodies, but also making sure that your monsters are all, like, pointing in the right directions, and things that need to be co-linked or co-linked, etc, etc, so... That is one thing I actually really like about Link Monsters. I think, from a design standpoint, I think Link Monsters are really cool in that they made zones actually matter. Like, I don't know how many people watching didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! before Link Monsters came out, but before Links were a thing, it kind of didn't matter where you put your stuff, like, pretty much ever. Like, ex with the exception of Infinite Impermanence, which I think came out about around the same time Links did. Because I know Imperm wasn't out yet when I quit the game, which was in, like, 2016. Or maybe it was just coming out. I'm trying to remember. But... Uh, in any case, yeah, I think it's cool that Link Monsters made zones matter. Because they... 
God, if you played any amount of Yu-Gi-Oh! before Links came out, you'll know they, they really did not matter at all. Which was a shame, because I think having zones is like one of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s defining features as a card game. So, again, I think it's really cool that they, uh... It's also a nice way to balance this type of extra deck summoning, right? Because you can always ensure that it's either impossible or at least very, very difficult to have certain combinations of Link monsters be able to work with each other. I think the thing that wasn't well designed, at least initially, was the fact that you can use tokens as Link materials. I still think that's kind of like, eh, but they've definitely embraced that as part of Link monster design. There's so many Link monsters that make tokens that it's like, they know what they're doing. But I remember when the mechanic was first spoiled, and we all were like, wait a second, so Scapegoat is just like a really, really good card now? And it was actually for, for a good minute there, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm not really talking... There it is! There is the U link <laughs> I don't think we're done by any means here, but... We have now occupied... Ah, it's a V-Link. We got the V-Link going on. But yeah, we get to occupy both extra monster zones, which... This mattered a lot more in Master Rule 4 than it does now in Master Rule 5, but it's still cute. Oh my god, wait a second. Hang on, this actually does still matter, because I didn't realize we worked Ibly into the combo, too. Like... Okay, that makes you linking matter a lot more if Ibly's on their field, because... They can't summon except for Link monsters, and, uh... You can't, you can't throw down a Link monster if you don't have a zone to put it in. Also, yeah, this... this... this, this combo is, like, slightly insane. <laughs> Very slightly insane. Oh, here's the other fun thing, too, with the Salomon Great Sanctuary, right? Is if they try to do this... Oh, well, we're, they're just gonna lose. <laughs> I think that was them conceding, them running the Ibly into the Dark Fluid, but... Uh, what I wanted to say about the Salomon Great Sanctuary... Is that... If your opponent tries to use Ibly... Like, if your opponent tries to run Ibly into one of your attack mode monsters to get it off the field so that way they can make plays... You can use Salamangrate Sanctuary to make the attack of whatever monster Ibly is battling into also zero. Because fun fact, and a lot of people actually don't know this, if two attack position monsters that have zero attack points battle with each other, they don't destroy each other. Normally, if two monsters with the same attack do battle each other, they destroy each other. But because the monsters have zero attack, they actually don't destroy one another. It's just like... It's not because of any inherent, like, thing or anything like that. It's just kind of like, that's just the way it works. Which, it makes sense in theory, right? Not that monsters inflict battle damage to each other. This isn't magic. But the idea is if, you know, a monster has zero attack, it's not going to do anything to the other thing it's battling, right? So, anyway. Uh, thank you very much, Shodat, for showing off that U-Link combo. We got to see a ton of cool stuff from the new pack here. And... This video, I feel like, honestly encapsulates why I like the viewer special so much. Uh, because, again, we get to see you all doing stuff that I am not currently doing. And as a result, we might otherwise not get to see. But, alright, that'll go ahead and do it for this video, this viewer special. And, again, uh, if you weren't featured, there is always the next week as well. But, let's go ahead now and move to our outro. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.